Hello and welcome to Real Atheology. Atheists who regularly pose the problem of evil or suffering, be it logical or evidential, are often confronted with the high regard in which theists hold genuine moral freedom. So we're told that such freedom is so great a good that God ensures we have this freedom, even at the very great risk of our abusing it. But interestingly, many of these same theists also hold that God is essentially morally good, which is incompatible with moral freedom. So the idea here is that unlike we humans who are morally free because we face genuine choices between good and evil actions, it's impossible for a being who is essentially good to do anything other than good actions. The tension I'm referring to is explored in a paper titled, What is so good about moral freedom? In which philosopher Wes Morriston asks, if freedom is such a great good in human beings, why is it not a grave defect in God that he lacks it? And if the lack of moral freedom does not detract in any way from God's greatness, would it not have been better for us not to have it? In the case of Christian philosopher Richard Swinburne, a distinction is made between moral freedom, which is again a genuine moral choice between good and evil, and perfect freedom. So perfect freedom is the freedom that one has when they are not subject to irrational desires or inclinations. So like many others, Swinburne argues that God has perfect freedom, but he does not have moral freedom. But the question then becomes, if God is the greatest conceivable being, has perfect freedom, which is again a freedom from irrational desires, but lacks moral freedom, which is again a genuine choice between good and evil, then it seems clear that all else being equal, we are to think it better in the sense of being more like God to have, or to be perfectly free, rather than to be morally free. Not only would we be more like God if we were created perfectly free, the world would then contain no human moral failings, and presumably would be better off as a result. So if we're right in inferring that perfect freedom, like that kind of freedom that God has, is better all else being equal than moral freedom, then why think that appeals to the comparatively weaker good of moral freedom have any hope of defending theism against the problem of evil. Any such claims about the goodness of moral freedom in response to problems of evil could promptly be met with a comparatively greater goodness of perfect freedom. This dilemma also, at least it seems to me, raises a problem for those like William Lane Craig, who argue that while divine commands constitute our moral obligations, it is the very nature of God which grounds the goodness of moral values, which can be the content of such commands. So things like love and justice and things like that. For if something is good, if and only if it resembles or can be found within the essential nature of God, then it becomes very difficult to see what could possibly ground the goodness of specifically moral freedom, the kind of freedom that God does not have and that only we have. So if no such freedom is found in God, then it doesn't seem like it could be a freedom that is grounded. So one has to ask what actually is valuable about that kind of freedom. There are, as always, responses to arguments like this, but I wanted to see what you guys think. As always, if you like this video and you want more like it, please click like, click subscribe, and check out my Patreon linked right here. And please consider a modest contribution to Real Aid Theology. Thank you for watching. And finally, I'd like to thank all of my patrons for their contributions in helping me create these videos. And the following people especially. Ryan King, Mason Colbert, John Danahar, Brandon McCleary, St. Nimbus, and the top contributor, patron saint of real atheology, Matt Smith. Thanks, everybody.